Hi, this is Ryan Swinemer of Nautel's Customer Service Department. Uh, today we are going to demonstrate the removal and replacement of the rack interface board on an NX series transmitter. We have our camera set up into the rear of an NX50 transmitter and we are looking at the rack interface area. We see a protective cover over top of or underneath of the rack interface. First step is to remove six Phillips head screws with a number one Phillips screwdriver using extreme caution not to drop these screws into the transformer area or into the back plane area. So I'm going to go ahead and do those. Now that we have the six screws removed from the rack interface board protective cover, you can see two wires on the left, two white wires passing through the board. Um, we have to disconnect those as we remove the rack interface board. There's white labels on each, so we give a wiggle and pull down, and the white label will pull away from the first one. And we make note of the label number and which port it came from. I'll go ahead and take the second one off and move out of the way. and the rack interface board cover is removed. It should be noted that this procedure should not be completed while there's AC power applied to the transmitter and you should follow all safety regulations in having it removed. Now that we have the rack interface board protective cover removed, we have a RF drive distribution board that mates with the rack interface board. So next step is to remove one, two Phillips head screws and two pillars that secure the rack inter or the RF drive interface board to the rack uh, as well. Number one Phillips head screws and a six millimeter um, wrench or nut driver or an adjustable wrench to remove the pillars. an extra two. Two Phillips head screws just behind the silver connectors. Sorry about that. Remove those. Now that we have the six pieces of mounting hardware, the RF drive distribution will fall down. and pull out from the RF, uh, from the rack interface. We we'll disconnect this Cat5 cable on the right and we can bend this board out of the way gently. Next step will be to remove the rack interface board uh, mounts. We have one Phillips head screw, two Phillips head screws, and then we have four pillars Again, the pillars use a six millimeter wrench or nut driver or an adjustable wrench and a number one Phillips head um, screwdriver for the screws. I'm going to go ahead and remove those. Now that we have the mounting hardware out of the way for the rack interface board, we have to disconnect all of the cables. Um, we have several DB style connectors that use a flathead screwdriver for securing. We also have two large DC connections on the left that simply pull out with a little bit of effort. Well, I will go ahead and disconnect all those. It should be noted that you should make sure you note where the labels of each wire goes and where it mates to on the board. So now that I have all of the cables disconnected from the rack interface board, it pulls away from the uh, combiner 
uh, interface for the modules from three DB25 connections. And we have a rack interface board removed. And now we get our spare rack interface board and we put it in place using the reverse method. A couple of suggestions is to get your cables connected before mounting it to the ceiling of the transmitter area uh, so that you're able to move things around a little bit more.